think, before I forget. It's totally my responsibility. Also, this about pure land and all this, I might have given you a wrong answer. So, these questions with, you know, levels and pure lands and all this, is better you ask the Lama. Because they study all these structures of the past, or Kelsey and Mongo, she would also you know much better. Then, also, the question about. <coughs> about the conventional eye and you know in what way is it is related to the to the exaggerated eye. I think it's like they're mixed together kind of or like on the basis of the conventional eye you can put there. But I might be wrong. So so whenever you go into an argument about with somebody about something that I said, don't quote me because I might be wrong. So it's okay. I never really studied studied very deeply. So um, don't argue with somebody about what when they say, but this is different, could well be. Also in Tibetan Buddhism, very often you see that there's different ways of doing things. So this is what you learn, you become very flexible. Some say the clear nature of mind is permanent, some say it's not permanent, some say in Iran everything is finished, some say no, it's not finished, and it's okay, it's just different views. And uh, nobody, nobody worries. The Westerners get upset, you yeah. know. That I remember yeah. they asking, they asked the Lama, the Geshe Dawa at the library, why can't you put all this? He said, well, it makes life interesting. <laughs> why does it always have to be the same? See, conventional reality, there's not one truth because all of it is false. All of it is wrong. Some of it is drastically lo wrong, and other things are, are only a little bit wrong. But because we see it as inherent existence. So there's not one thing that you can say that is really true. The only thing that's really true, that really true in, this, in the sense of it appears the way it exists, is ultimate truth, which is emptiness. Because when you look for the I, for the seemingly self existing I, and you cannot find anything, you only find not I. You only find like lacking of real I. And then the mind stays in that absence of real I, because you're not looking for something. Uh, I mean, you're looking for the seemingly self-existing I, but you cannot find it anywhere. Like the same way, if I'm looking, if I take this clock apart, and I look for the clock, where I can really say, this is the clock. There's not one part that I can point to where it is <coughs> clock. Yeah? So in emptiness, when your mind is absorbed with um, you know, these two minds come abiding in special insight when you have an appearance of emptiness, there thing, things exist, appear the way it exists, meaning as empty. That's why it's called ultimate truth, because you can't go any deeper. Relative truth, you can always come up with a yes but. Always. There's nothing that is really that. There's always another side to it. All of it is dependent. Long is depending on short. Good is depending on bad. And then we try to get rid of the bad and we want to keep the good. If you get rid of the bad, you also have to get, also the good disappears. So it's to go beyond that, much further than that, to go into freedom of duality. And then to understand, and then understanding the relative truth, duality for what it is, as a dependent arising. Impermanent, and if we don't understand it, in the nature of suffering. Your nightmare, if you know that you're dreaming, you're not suffering. And you act, you do things. It's only when you don't know that you're dreaming, then you suffer. So this whole mess of this, you know, that we have, is based on a misconception. Thinking that the dream is real. That's it. Okay. <coughs> so I thought we'll do Tongleng with the four immeasurables, because the four immeasurables, you remember, equanimity, male beings, um, live in equanimity, free of attachment and anger. So we do it kind of a little bit globally. Yeah? So you think, I have anger, I have attachment, if you have it. Do you have it? No. <laughs> we do. Now, then we think, this is not about me, this is about others. May they be free from suffering, and I let you choose. You can either take your future self, or you take a friend, or a child, or a mother, or a father, or whatever, or the whole universe, or a few friends, a group, whatever. You, you, you decide. And you decide whether you want to do this or not, because you're breathing in negative things, like the, a 
attachment and aversion that creates enemies and um, friends. Friends in the sin of exciting the in the sin in the, this journey, in the sense of uh, exaggerated friends. Okay, like this very strong attachment. So you think other people have it too, and since I have it anyway, I'm not important. May they be free from it. So we go, may all beings live in equanimity, free from attachment and anger. You breathe it in, you take it in the form of black smoke. Bring it down to the self-cherishing who creates friend and enemy. Because friend and enemy is not out there, it's here. It comes from this side, not from that side. And then you breathe out, may all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. You breathe out light. You give all your, all your moments of happiness that you know that you will have from looking at the sunset, from eating an ice cream, from being loved, from loving others, from having humor, whatever. You give that to others. Then we do that for a while. Yeah? Then the other one is, the next one is, may all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. So you take the suffering and, again, all the negative emotions, especially that ignorance, and when you think May they never be separated from sorrowless bliss. You give away all your merit from your practice, so that they yeah, <laughs> so that they can enjoy it. It's kind of whatever practice I have done until now, I did it for them. I can think of a lot really. So that is um, so. Then then we're sure we're not you know we're Mahayana practitioners. That already now people already now benefit from my practice. Not only when I'm a Buddha now. I be of benefit to them. I give them all my, um, all my positive seeds that I, or energy that I've created for the practice. If you look upon this as perverse, I totally understand, so you don't need to do it. So I will say very few words. You, the technique is simple. If you think, no, no, thank you very much, I don't want to do it, you do something else. You breathe in all the good things that exist in this universe and um, when you breathe out, you think you're breathing out all the things that bother you in the form of black smoke. It diffuses somewhere in the distance, that's fine, and you feel liberated from it. You can also do like this. Because the other one is it's the other way around. The other one is difficult, okay? If you don't feel so good about yourself, you shouldn't actually do the meditation if you don't know how to do it because it makes you feel worse. Whereas if you do it and you know what it's for and it does make you feel worse, then you're happy. Whereas if you don't know what this is all about, it makes you feel worse, you think something is wrong. Yeah. Or you can do it just in a very simple, global way. When you breathe in, you think, breathing in smoke, all the bad stuff. Breathing out, I give everything good I have. If that is too much, you think, you just breathe out. And you think, every good thing that I have, the goodness I have in my heart, may others benefit from from it, and you just breathe that out, and you don't, you forget about the other thing. So you choose what you want to do. You choose your level. This is a way of starting to become responsible for ourselves to see where do I stand, what can I do. The Tonglen breathing in the, the the black stuff is difficult, and you need to know, you need to be able to do it and then let go. Not look how it makes you feel. Because the purpose is only for us to increase our courage. That's it. You bring it down to the black rock that we call ego or self cherishing It explodes it, and then we breathe out the light. Yeah? You haven't had much um, preparation for that. So if you want to do it with your own future suffering or just with a friend, that's fine. If you want to do it with many people, it's also fine. Do you have questions? It's important. If, you, if it's not clear, please say so. It's all clear? Okay. Okay. First, we generate a very happy mind about having been here and done that. Not, you hui, it's finished. <laughs> no, it's true, because this creates the habit that you start, you need to start things in order to finish them, because the subtle mind remembers the good feeling when something is finished. So you're not doing things for doing them, you're doing things so that there is an end. I mean, what kind of mind is that? And very often we are like that. We want a good feeling at the end. <coughs> so it's very good when we think, wow, good thing that I did this. 
maybe I didn't understand that much, it's definitely my fault, it's okay, I take it, I take the blame, it's fine. I'm really not the best of teachers, you can get much better than me, but it's your karma, <laughs> you get somebody like me. So. To be happy to have spent like these four and a half days in the company of people who all of us want to develop a good heart. How rare and how special and how beautiful is that? Nobody has any wish to harm somebody. There is no competition. How many times are you for such an amount of time in a group like this? Hardly ever. So we appreciate the presence of the others. And we appreciate the Dharma friends, people who, as Leora said, just a bunch, and Leora and Shoshana was there also, just a bunch mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who thought that this is a good thing to do and sat down, started to think, what can we do, and started to practice together without any teacher. They did as best as they could, and look what came of it. And only something like 15, 20 years or something. It's amazing when people are committed, what you can create. So we feel an open heart towards these committed people, even if we are not committed, but they are so, so nice, so wonderful. People who are committed now will keep this whole thing going and alive take responsibility, give their time, even though most of what they hear is not praise, but oh, this is not right, and that is not right, and I don't like this, and I don't like that. Difficult. But people very joyfully do this work for free, giving their time, giving up their pleasures that they could have in that time. And we say thank you in your heart. And we rejoice. We're happy. Don't feel guilty. <coughs> and then I'm going to lead you through these four immeasurables. As I said, if you want to do something different, please feel free to do it. The first one is, may all, beings be, may all beings live in equanimity, free from attachment and anger that hold some close and others distant. Then you look at your own mind and you see that most of our reactions that we have are done with either attachment, oh, I like very much, or aversion, or total indifference. All three are negative mind. Most of the time they're present in our mind. So we have them, we know it. So we think just for a change, just for once, I'm not important here. Others are more important. And you decide who these others are. Either your future self, people that you feel very close to, or a whole group of people a whole country, a whole part of the world or the whole world. And you think, since I'm having attachment, aversion and indifference, I might as well experience that on behalf of all the others so that they are free from it. So when you breathe in, you think I'm taking all these mental pollution that is flying around in the air I breathe it in so that nobody else has to experience it. You bring it down to your heart, that black smoke, and the ego says, are you crazy? No, thank you very much. I don't want this. It resists. It grows and it explodes. And out of that luminous space, you breathe out light with the thought, may these beings that are visualized, or may all beings, happiness 
and the causes of happiness thanks to my practice. So you're actually contributing by giving out light from your heart, your own happiness, you're giving it to others. May they be free from attachment, anger, and indifference or ignorance. I take it upon myself. I have it anyway. Form of black smoke. Bring it down to your heart. Self-cherishing explodes or runs away out of the luminous space, which is the nature of your open heart. You breathe out light that represents everything good that you have so that others can enjoy it. And you see how they are receiving it. you feel you're losing the visualization, just bring it back. Breathing in anger, aversion, attachment, greed, indifference, and ignorance. It explodes the self-cherishing that is sitting like a black rock, black rock in the heart. Breathing out all your goodness, all your happy moments with the thought, may they be happy, may they be well, may they be loving and peaceful. Whatever I have that is that I call good, my whole goodness, I totally give it to them.
then we think about the suffering of others with a compassionate heart and we think may they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering so we breathe in their present suffering and even the future suffering like karmic imprints and the negative emotions in the form of black smoke because again, we all know we have the suffering of change, we have the suffering of pain, we have the suffering of not wanting what we, not having what we want, not wanting what we have, desiring things that are far too high for us, and losing things that we are attached to. We have to undergo the suffering of birth, sickness, old age, and death. So again, this is my situation, it's okay. This is again not about me, it's about others. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Let me experience it on behalf of them. I breathe it in in the form of black smoke, bring it down to the heart. Self-cherishing explodes, I breathe out the light. And as I'm breathing out the light, you think, May they never be separated from the happiness that is beyond all suffering. The happiness of liberation and full awakening. And you breathe out light that represents all the positive energy from your spiritual practices. That you think everything I've done until now, everything I will do in the future, it's for them. That is bodhicitta. It's to benefit them. So whatever I have already now, I give away. Let them have it in the form of light. All your knowledge about emptiness, all your development of compassion and love, all your antidotes for negative emotions, all your courage, all your understanding, all your inspiration in the form of light.
if you are courageous and you are ready to do that, you could think there's a lot of aggression in this area and a lot of suffering that comes from it. And you know both from your own experience, you know aggression, not just when it comes your way, but also when you give it out. And you know the suffering that com goes with it when you receive the aggression. So in a very kind of um, more general way, you, you could think, I'm so courageous now, I'm breathing in all the aggression and the suffering that comes with it, so nobody has to experience it in the form of black smoke. And I'm breathing out all my wish for peace, for happiness, for tolerance, spaciousness and harmony in the form of light. do not just breathe in don't forget to breathe out the light your goodness your ability to be peaceful in difficult situations your insights your realization of mind transformation your compassion your love and your wisdom then just visualize peace. Whatever comes up as an image in your mind, just visualize
then we can end this particular meditation with a dedication from Kim Kodyalsen who says, If I am well, I am happy. Because I dedicate for the happiness and well-being of all. If I suffer, I am happy. Because I take upon myself the suffering of all. May the ocean of suffering in samsara quickly be exhausted. We can all think that we dedicate um, the effort that we have made here over these few days to peace in this area by thinking this is my contribution to the peace in this area. When I go out, may I bring peace and harmony instead of uh, adding to the aggression, the tension, the fear, the confusion. I'm able to create a little peace, a little bit of peace around me, my neighborhood, my family, wherever I'm going. And may this beautiful practice of non-violence that has been born in our minds may continuously grow and that which has not been born in the minds may quickly be born and grow and grow. May everybody have access to their own innate goodness, spaciousness and wisdom. We will realize that the negative emotions that lead to suffering, not outside conditions. And may we all be able to discover that potential that we have for altruism, open heart towards all beings, very, very. For me, it's always very good because then I, I see myself where I stand. I'm not, I haven't gone very far. But still, I mean, there's a lot of joy in this class and a lot of fun also. Because you learn, you know, this whole emptiness thing, you learn to take yourself much less serious than one did before. It's so, it's so, I don't have to be special anymore. It's like, it's such a relief. I don't have to succeed. I don't have to be special. It's like, what well, gives you so much freedom? And this is what I learned through the practice. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you very, very much. Yeah. Um, for this course. Yeah. And for developing so much every year. It's, <laughs> it's amazing every year that the course is so much. No, it's not me, this is your mind. I always wait, say wait, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and for giving us a model for such a possibility of development and for uh, helping us develop in this way, actually, mm. this is what I feel yeah. coming to this retreat. Thank you very much, Giddy. Thank you, Giddy. He's, he's been uh, the manager of this course for I don't know how many times. <laughs> But I still don't know how to make the cut. Kata, wife, is a sign of I come in peace. Mm -hmm. You offer it and then you get it back. So that means both hearts are peaceful. That's very nice. And it has the auspicious signs on it, so then it's bringing you luck and all these kinds of things that we definitely need. So 
All the best to you. May your positive karma ripen upon you right now and may you be able to purify your negative karma before it ripens. And all the best and may we meet again. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you.